Welcome. So let's begin in a comfortable seat. Get really, really comfortable. Set up your space well and give yourself a half hour of time to just reset and settle in. So a seat that feels like you can hold it with a little integrity and presence that doesn't seem like it's working too hard. So let the arms relax down by the size of the waist. Palms settle on the lap and the spine grows tall. Imagine growing roots at the sits bones that rest right at the base of the pelvis. And as you ground down softly through the sits bones, feel the spine grow really long. And allow the crown of the head to feel this energetic rise up towards the sky. Still resting across the chest, along the collarbones, tops of the shoulders. The eyes open or close, and then just enjoy this time to start to slow it down. Right? Just giving yourself this time to become a little bit more present. Cultivate a sense of spaciousness and ease in the body and within the mind. Notice a gentle cadence of the breath, just like ocean waves, right? Expanding and rising, and then softening back in, receding back in. We'll take a gentle breath in through the nose as we inhale, and a soft, audible, oceanic exhale out. And then audible sounds. We'll do one more of those, breathing in softly through the nose. An audible exhale out. Letting go, and then letting go just a little bit more. And then softly open the eyes if you have them closed. And we're gonna start in all fours tabletop posture. So take your time, you might need some padding underneath your knees if you need to. And tabletop posture, we're trying to not to cat or cow the spine. You want length from your tailbone to the crown of the head. The wrists stay in line with the shoulders, knees, and the hips. And then we'll do some simple catting and cowing of the spine. You might play with tucking the toes. As you let the tailbone rise up, the chest will draw forward. Your gaze slightly lifts. And as you untuck the toes, start to draw the tailbone down, rounding through each vertebrae of the spine, letting the crown of the head draw down towards the floor and the belly to hollow. And then we're going to start to move at a cadence that feels really nice in your body. And if you don't like tucking your toes, you don't have to. So rounding out vertebrae by vertebrae, hollowing out through the belly, letting the crown draw down, stretching out through the back of the neck. And then that nice inhale where the tailbone rises, the belly draws down, the chest draws forward. Firm up the palms on the floor, keep the gaze soft and relaxed, and let the breath flow. One more round like that, inhaling, coming into a nice cow shape, soft back bend. And then rounding, rounding through each vertebrae. Tailbone draws down, the low back rounds and the mid back rounds, and then the upper back rounds as the head releases. Come back to a nice, sweet, neutral. Widen each child's pose. The toes touch and the knees widen just a bit so that we can soften the hips towards the heels. Make sure that your forehead making contact with the floor and that there, you feel a softness of the hips towards the heels. Belly relaxing, chest softening. Brow line, really relax, maybe slightly draw the brow line from side to side. A little gentle massage. Take an easy walk of the palms over towards the right side of the mat, lifting up the head and chest a little bit, and then drawing the forehead back down towards the floor, softening the chest. Anchor the left hip towards the left heel. Just notice what you feel, the experience of the left side of the waist. And then start to tempt the fingertops Walk your hands back to center playfully and over towards the left side of the mat. Relaxing the forehead back down, letting the right hip soften towards the heel. Notice what this feels like through the right side body. And gently come back to center when you're ready, soft and easy. Rise back up to all fours, nice and easy. And we're going to do some hip circles. So see that the wrists and shoulders are aligned in this tabletop position. Palms walk a little bit more in front of you and slightly wider. Make sure you have something under your knees if you need it. Let the hips shift towards the left and then slightly forward over towards the right. So you're creating hip circles and maybe all the way back towards the heels. Maybe tuck the toes and soften the chest and the forehead down as the chest opens. And then you can either exaggerate these movements or make them smaller depending on how that feels in the body. 
Let the breath flow nice and easy. I call this getting the kinks out. <laughs> Firm up the palms actively when you draw forward because now we're weight bearing, right, on the palms. So soften the shoulders away from the ears, micro bend the elbows. Nice and easy. You do not have to make these circles as big. You can make them smaller. And then start to move in the opposite direction. See if you can start to connect breath with movement. Maybe inhaling to shift forward and exhaling to draw back. So circles, hip circles, nice and easy. Let the neck be relaxed, shoulders soft, particularly when you're drawing back, hips towards the heels. And maybe one more big sweeping circle in this direction. See what feels it's like a sense of completeness when you work? And then nice and easy, hips soften towards the heels, pause and breathe. And gently walk your hands up towards your thighs. Coming up onto uh, your shins, you could take padding if you needed to. I'll face the camera so you see me. So more of a Tadasana spine where there's length, crown is lifted, tailbone's drawing down, side body long. The right leg is gonna come out towards the side of your mat with the foot planted down in line with the front knee. The hands come to heart center and the arms reach out in opposite directions. Warrior your two arms, flutter through the fingers, reach out in opposite directions and soften and lengthen through the neck. As you lift the palms up, thumbs reach back behind you. Take your time to rise up through the sides of the waist. Go ahead and bring a prayer up overhead, clasp the palms, and flip the palms up towards the sky, lengthen through the sides of the waist. Draw the navel and ribs in, lengthen through the neck, breathe easy. Let the palm come down towards the floor, arm reach up and over for gate pose, parivasana. Come back up, arms rise up nice and high. Cactus the arms, elbows draw down and in. And then spiral the pinkies in, thumbs out, reach your arms up again, rise up. Palm comes down towards the leg, and that left arm sweeps up and over, side bend stretch. So that opening through the side body as the chest stays relaxed and easy. Rise back up, inhale, float it up. Arms soften down by your sides. When the hands come towards the waist, just carefully bring the shin in. If you need to bring your fingers down towards the floor, soften through the shoulders, relax a little bit, and then let's bring the opposite leg out towards the side. When the foot plants down, you want the foot in line with your front right knee and the side body, the torso to be long and relaxed. Bring your hands to heart center, arms reach out in, opp uh, um, in opposite directions. These warrior two arms flutter through the fingers, soften through the tops of the shoulders, flip the palms up, thumbs face back, pause, and gather the air up with you as you rise the arms up overhead. When a prayer meets, clasp the palms, flip them up towards the ceiling, towards the sky, lengthen through the sides and back of the neck, Feel the rib cage lift up and out of the hips and the chest rise. And then let the palm come down towards the leg, arms sweeps up and over, side bend stretch. Feeling the whole right side body open up. Maintaining some stability in the foot on the floor and the shin and top of the ankle. Come back when you're ready. And cactusing the arms, elbows draw down and an opening through the chest. And then spiral the pinkies in, thumbs out as the arms elevate back up. Breathe in, and as you exhale, palm touches the leg, arm sweeps up and over, side bend, parinasa, the gate. Gaze could look upward if you'd like it to. Find the easiness to your practice. Rise back up as you inhale. Float the arms softly down by your sides. Nice and easy. Hands come to your waist and carefully bring the shin back in. If you set yourself to the side, just reset yourself back to all fours. Tabletop posture. Pull cat and cow the spine just once, tuck the toes. Let the tailbone rise up as the chest draws forward. And then untuck the toes, start to draw the tailbone down towards the floor, rounding through the low back, then the mid back, upper back as the head releases down. Come back to a nice, easy, neutral. We'll be little down dog together. You could bring your palms a little bit more in front of you. You're gonna tuck your toes, lift the knees. You might lift the knees and hover for a moment, creating a lot of shoulder stability, broaden the upper back, and then press the hips up and back, Keeping the knees bent, keep the hips nice and elevated and elongate through the torso. Maintaining length, just like when you're standing or in seated posture from tailbone through crown. And then starting to bend one knee at a time, dropping the right heel down, getting that beautiful stretch to the back of the right leg, coming out to the tips of the right toes and pressing the left heel down. Keep pressing the palms of the, into the floor, creating a nice foundation of the palms. And then slowly settle the legs, a little bend in the knees, but the heels are descending down. Draw the belly in, soften through the sides of the neck. Take an easy breath in through the nose. And an audible exhale out. 
Letting go, letting go. Let's come forward to a high plank, nice and slow. You can always drop your knees down, but otherwise think more of a Tadasana spine. Tailbone reaching towards the heels, shoulder, shoulders broad, upper back broad, and then pike the hips up and back, down dog, nice and easy. Reset, breathe in and breathe out. Let's come forward to another high plank, nice and slow. You're on the toes and balls of the feet. The inner thighs draw towards one another. The tailbone reach towards the heels, crown forward, press actively into the palms, don't forget to breathe, and then pike the hips up and back into downward facing dog. Nice and easy. We're gonna do one more of those. You can always feel at liberty to drop the knees down, right? It's a self-care practice. Inhale, come forward, find a high plank. Are your wrists in line with your shoulders? Can you feel length through the sides of the waist? Gently release the shins down towards the floor and tuck the toes and slowly lower down. Elbows are just bending. Everything else stays pretty much the same. By right? keeping the spine long, when the forehead and chest meet the floor, pause, palms root to the floor, elbows hug in, root down to the tops of the thighs and tops of the feet, and lift up into Cobra Bhujangasana. Taking your time, shoulders away from the ears, gaze is soft and relaxed, tuck the toes, press the hips back towards the heels briefly, and then rise back up to downward facing dog. Take a complete inhale, a complete exhale, and then we'll take a nice easy walk to the front of that. Take a walk nice and slow, step by step, or riding. Let's turn forward, bend to Uttanasana at the front of your mat. Feet are parallel, maybe a little bit wider, like hips width apart. Soft and bend the backs of the knees a little bit to release the low back and let the head hang heavy. Let the torso start to soften sides of the waist. Arms relax, fingertips. You might even bring the ground up to meet you with some blocks if you have them nearby. And then very slowly, as you root into your heel bones, start to slowly come up to stand. So as you rise up, feel the legs nice and strong, your foundation, your feet, as you rise up and elevate vertebrae by vertebrae until you start to feel your crown rising upward towards the sky. Arms cut, you're gonna reach up nice and high for Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. And as you exhale all the way back down towards the mat, you can soften the knees and bow into the legs. Forward bend, Uttanasana. Walk your hands up halfway until you have more of a tabletop of, uh, position of the, of the spine, right? From tailbone through crown, there's length. Shoulders are broad, right? Face is soft, gaze is down towards the floor. Exhale, release back down, forward bend. Rise up to stand, arms sweep out and up. And as you exhale, bring your hands to heart center in prayer. Hands come down by your sides when you're ready. You know, come into a wide straddle, facing any direction that's comfortable for you. You'll have your feet parallel, your torsos upright and long. Hands come to your waist and you'll pivot your front toes towards the front of your mat. Bring your back toes in about 10 degrees. Heel to heel or heel to arch alignment. And once you have your hands at your waist, as you bend this front knee, feel the pelvic bowl, the hips kind of descend down like a hammock. Torso stays nice and upright, hands come to heart center. Arms reach out in opposite directions, flutter through the fingers. And you can look over your front fingerprints if that feels in the body. <laughs> Take your breath and inhale, straighten the front leg. Top arm sweeps up and back for reverse triangle pose, trikonasana. Engage and lift your front thigh as the ribs lift up and out of the hips and the side of the waist. Revamp through the front knee and reestablish virabhadrasana to warrior two. Big teen of the arms, finger top to finger top. Straighten the front leg, top arm reaches up and back. Breathe in, maybe the gaze looks up. Firm up the heels and the inner thighs and re-bend through the front knee, standing up nice and tall as the hips soften down. Last time, inhale, straighten the front leg, top arm reaches up and back. And this time, the back hand stays at the hip. And as you start to lean the torso arm forward over the front leg, try not to lock out the front knee like I am, you'll keep that side of the waist nice and long, resting the palm down anywhere, maybe a block, the shin, keeping this back hip closed, and taking your time to build triangle pose. You might graze the fingerprints across the collarbones as the left arm rises up towards the ceiling, towards the sky. And then you feel that nice broad expanse across the chest, across the collarbones, gaze might look up. Firm up your back heel a little bit more and breathe easy. As you rebound through the front knee, rise up nice and slow, flip the front palm like you're cupping the air, come back to a peaceful warrior. 
feeling that shin drawing forward as top fingerprints reach back, the C-shaped curve of the body. Come back, Lira Padrasta two, warrior two, hands come to your waist, straighten your right leg and pause. Notice and breathe. Turn your right toes towards the side of the mat, look to the back of your mat. Left toes are gonna to start to turn towards the back of your mat and bring the back toes in about 10 degrees. Feel a nice firm foundation of the feet, upright spine, and as you bend the back knee, hips descend down like a hammock. Torsos nice and upright, hands come to heart center. Arms out in that beautiful T position, flutter through the fingers, and maybe look over your back fingerprints. Good. Firm up your back heel a little bit more, and we'll do that warrior, um, well, that triangle flow. So we're gonna straighten the back leg, top arm reaches up and back. Feel that beautiful long diagonal line of energy. Rebend through the front knee, T out through the arms. Find even weight bearing in both of the legs. Firm up that back heel, straighten the back leg, top arm reaches up and back. One more time, nice and easy. Rebending, rediscovering a shape in the body, warrior two. Straighten that back leg, top arm comes up and back. Firm up the front thigh, lengthen through the side of the waist. You bring the back hand to the hip and start to lean the torso and arm forward with the palm faced up. And then firm up the inner thighs, root into the heels, pause, rest the palm down without shortening the side body here, right? We're gonna to start to keep that hip closed. We might turn the chest up slightly and grazing the fingerprints, palms across the collarbones and chest, arm might elevate up. You can always save the back hip too. You really want this back hip to stay closed. Imagine the right sitting bone reaching towards the right heel. Breathe easy, steady and easy, and then come back up, playfully come up to warrior two. Flip the front palm up and back, peaceful warrior, nice and easy. And coming back to warrior two when you're ready, pause, slow it down, hands come to your waist, straighten the back leg, pivot your toes towards me, go all five toes. Heel them in enough until you start to get yourself to a standing position, right? And sit to the so nice and easy. Shrug the shoulders, lengthen through the torso, feet nice and rooted to the earth, arms elevate up and out, Urva Hastasana, upward salute. Sit back into chair pose. As you sit back in the chair, cactusing the arms, good. As the shins reach forward, the hips sink back, the lower belly draws in and the chest is very broad and relaxed, gaze soft. Spiral the pinkies in, elevate the arms up nice and high, and start to stand up nice and tall, arms soften down by your sides. Really easy, good. We'll do that one more time. We'll sweep the arms up nice and high, gather it all up. Imagine you moving through kind of like uh, water as the arms elevate. Sit back into chair, bend the knees, shift the hips back and down. Cactus the arms, elbows draw down and in. Drishti soft and relax. So there's a lot of length from the hip crease through the shoulders, right? Maintaining that length through the side body. Spiral the pinkies in, thumbs out, stand up nice and tall, firm up the thighs. And as you exhale, soften the arms down by your sides, nice and easy. <laughs> Great. So start to find your Tadasana stance and then shift your weight of gravity over to your right standing leg. So bring your hands to your waist and feel yourself kind of create a little shift. Peel up the heel, opposite heel. And we're gonna take our time to slowly hug the left knee in towards the chest. Keeping the spine nice and long. So think crown reaching up, shoulders in line with the hips maybe softening your standing knee. And hands can both come around here if that's comfortable. Doesn't matter, you can always have this for the hand at the right hip. And roll out your ankle in one direction and the opposite direction, nice and slow. Okay, from there, knee draws in line with the hip. And you might bring your hands to your waist and take a breath to lengthen, extend out this knee, lengthen this leg for a breath. Try not to lean back, soften the standing knee, Bring the foot down towards the floor, soften the knees, sweep the arms up nice and high. And as you exhale, bring your hands to heart center. <laughs> Close the eyes for a moment of a complete inhale and a complete exhale. Arms soften down by your sides, eyes easily open. Shift your weight of gravity into your left standing leg. Bring your hands to your waist and peel up your right heel, soften your standing left knee and see if you can slowly hug this knee in towards the chest. Keeping the torso nice and upright. If you wanted to, hands can come behind the back of the knee. They didn't have to be on top of the shin. Keep the shoulders softening away from the ears. Try to maintain and establish a tadasana spine. You can playfully roll the ankle out in one direction or the other. Nice and easy. The hand can always come here as well. 
and a little bit of just drawing the knee slightly down until it's in line with this right hip crease. Torso's nice and upright, and you're gonna see if you can slowly extend, lengthen this leg out for a breath. Anything you wanna do with your hands. Take one more breath in, firm up the thighs, grow tall through the spine, soften the foot down towards the floor, arms sweep up nice and high, rise up. And as you exhale, bring your hands to heart center in prayer. Find yourself standing at the front of the mat if you aren't already. Good. And then rise arms up nice and high. And as you exhale, all the way down, Uttanasana forward bend, bowing into the legs. Halfway as you inhale, take your time. And exhale, release back down. You'll plant both palms and bend the knees. You can step back either to downward facing dog or a tabletop position. Either transition is perfectly wonderful. Decide what feels good in your body. If you want to flow through a vinyasa with me, come forward to a high plank as you inhale. And then lowering all the way down towards the floor. You can drop the knees like I am or keep them lifted. Once the forehead and chest meet the floor, palms root into the floor, elbows hug in, thighs root, tops of the toes, and you lift up into a back bend. Bhujangasana, cobra pose. Shoulders away from the ears, a lot of upper body strength and shoulder strength. And then soften the forehead back down towards the floor. Press the hips towards the heels, widen the knees, and come into wide knee child's pose. Bowing in and letting go. And gently walk your hands over towards the right side of the mat. As they travel over, lift the head and chest, bow the forehead down, just breathe easy. And slowly tent the fingertops, come back to center, pause, bow, and then come back up, walk the hands over towards the left side. Anchor the right hip towards the right heel, just find that beautiful lateral stretch to the right side body. And nice and easy, come back to center and pause. Slowly, slowly, rolling, rolling, rolling up to a seated posture, <laughs> nice and easy. And bring the legs out in front of you when you're ready. Hips to one side and legs come out nice and long. Once you're there, you might need padding underneath you, see what's working for you. You can bring the feet together and the knees wide from Baddha Klanasana, bound angle pose. So keeping more of a neutral pelvis so you're not tilting back. You want to feel yourself right under those sits bones. You might rock on them. You might also, as you start to kind of settle in, let the knees draw in a little bit and then down. And just noticing this inner rotation of the hip joint and outer rotation as they draw down. Keep the spine long, shoulders in line with the hips. Take an easy breath in. Imagery is important. So imagine lengthening through the spine as you inhale. And as you exhale, just slightly leaning forward. Notice how that, the body receives that kind of movement of leaning forward. You can allow the back of the neck to soften, the shoulders to relax down the upper back, and just explore a shape in your body, right? Just breathing in and being curious about sensations arising. And a steadiness, a real steadiness and grounding in these poses. Soften the space in between the shoulder blades a little bit more in the backs of the eyes, and then slowly, slowly come on up when you're ready. Awesome. The legs come at a big wide straddle, Sit up nice and tall, and then bring your knee, your right knee, and bend it, placing the right foot on the floor. Take your right knee out towards the side, and you're gonna take your inner right foot, and you're placing the inner left thigh, nice and slow. And once you're there and you have that, sit up nice and tall, and you're gonna just lean a little bit into this left leg. Maybe the palm comes onto the, uh, the knee or the shin. Right palm stays at the knee and turns slightly upward towards the right. As the belly, ribs, chest, and gaze rise up, arm, right arm elevates up, and then lean slightly into this left leg, a little bit, good. Finding the opening through side body. Nice and slow, breathe in. Breathe out, rise back up, inhale. Let's twist open towards our right, front palm on the knee, hand behind you, and feel the turning of the belly, the ribs, the chest, shoulders soft away from the ears. You don't have to keep that left sits bone fixed either. You can let the pelvic bone move a little bit. Come back to center, arms rise up nice and high. Hands come to heart center. And then start to just bow easy. So it's like the heart kind of wants to draw forward. And then the palms travel down towards the floor. Walk them slightly forward. And then bow the head, just releasing into this little stretch. Slowly walk the hands back up. And take that right knee. And lengthen the right leg out to a wide straddle. Left knee bends, right, pause, open up the left hip knee, and place the left foot inside the inner seam of the right inner thigh. 
Sit up nice and tall, spine long. Right palm comes down towards the right shin, left hand to knee. Start to slightly turn open. Palm might kind of graze across the collarbones and chest, rising up the arms up. A little rotation here, belly, ribs, and chest. And then starting to lean the left fingertips over toward the right foot, right leg. Keeping the gaze up or down really doesn't matter. What's your preference? <laughs> and just kind of embodying the shape. Slowly rise the right arm back up. Get nice and tall to the sides of the waist. Hands come to heart center. Oh, no, I forgot the twist. Let's twist open. Twisting open towards the left. Front palm on knee, hand behind you. Ah. And then again, belly, ribs, chest, all rotating. You don't have to fix that right sits bone down. Spine stays long, crown still lifted. Feel what you feel through the torso. Come back to center, arms reach up. Now hands come to heart center. And we lean slightly forward. It's like the heart wants to soften forward. Bring the palms in front of you, maybe walk them forward a little bit. And you can softly bow the head a little bit. You can walk more forward, just see what feels good in your body. You're skillfully, intelligently, you know, placing the body in these interesting shapes. And then slowly walk your hands back up, nice and easy. Bring the leg out in front of you, left leg. Bend the knees and slowly come onto your back. So we can come right, nice and easy if you want to, bringing the feet at the at, uh, front edge of your mat. It's just a slight backward tilt of the pelvis to roll down. Palms can come forward. You can come down any way you'd like to. This is nice and easy. Just kind of slowly, slowly coming down towards the floor. Soft and relax through the shoulders and neck. And then once you come down nice and easy, arms reach back behind you. Navel in towards the spine. As you exhale, you hug both knees in towards the chest. And a little soft stretch for the low back. Relax the shoulders. Maybe roll out the ankles one direction the other. Rock gently from side to side because it just feels good. Knees kind of create little circles up towards the sky, sailing in one direction or the other. And then feet soften down onto the floor, nice and slow. I'm gonna come up for one bridge. So long spine here, right? Pelvis soft on the floor, feet about hips width apart. You'll take a breath in. And as you exhale that breath out, start to root into the feet a little bit more and peel up the hips off the floor. The low back starts to lift and the mid back starts to lift. You could bring the backs of your arms closer and towards the sides of the waist to draw down and root into as you come into your bridge shape. Your two hip points kind of want to shine up towards the ceiling. The back of the neck stays long and relaxed, face soft, and the breath flows. Take one more breath here and then slowly, really skillfully, mindfully, we release the low back down. And then the mid back and the hips soften towards the floor. One more nice hugging in, nice and slow. Take a happy baby, knees out wide, feet up towards the sky, hands behind the backs of the thighs, getting that nice squat posture in the body. Hands can come up towards the back of the calves, maybe outer edges of the feet, but maintaining length through the torso, right? Keeping the hips, the pelvic bowl on the floor. Neck long, breath soft and easy, a little rocking from side to side. Let the breath flow easy. Bring the feet softly down onto the floor again. Full body stretch, reach out nice and long. Hug the knees softly in towards the chest. And let the feet travel down onto the floor. Right ankle on top of left thigh. So the feet are about hips width apart. Right ankle outside of the ankle on left thigh. Just a little rocking sensation from side to side. So hips rock towards the right, you're more on the inner blade of your left foot. And come back to center, rock over towards your left hip. Your right hip can rise off the floor and come onto the outer blade of the left foot. Explore that a few times in the body. And then place both the right foot down and switch sides. Left outer ankle on top of the right thigh, right knee. So above the right knee, draw the left knee away from you. Arms anywhere you'd like by your sides, on the belly. Rock over towards your right hip. Come lift that left hip up, come onto the outer blade of the right foot. Come back to center, rock over towards the left hip. Come onto the inner blade of the left foot. You can let that right hip lift. You might do that a few times, nice and easy and slow. Creating some space in the outer hips and glutes. And then nice and slow, left foot comes towards the floor. 
arms out, uh, legs extend out, arms up overhead. And softly hug the knees in towards the chest. And then very slowly let the feet come down onto the floor. You'll set up for a sweet Shavasana. So Shavasana is spinal resting posture. Whatever that looks like for you, it could be here, something more restorative, legs extending out. You're welcome to pause the video, right? You could also come up for seated meditation. So whatever it is that creates a sense of invitation to relax within body and mind. And just relish in a little bit more quiet space and this invitation to slow down. so that you can experience your breath, your body resting in this present moment. Not needing to get ahead of ourselves or get to the next thing and check off the next thing on your list, but rather just settling in. Experience five more breaths. Of your inhales and exhales. That truly move like waves. Waves of the breath. Expanding, rising, and receding, softening back in. Take one more breath in through the nose. Soft, audible, exhale out, letting go, letting go. Soften the head from side to side, spread out through fingers and toes, gently gathering the knees in towards the chest and rolling over to one side. Taking a pause in fetal posture, making yourself comfortable for a moment. Pressing into the palms when you're ready to come up to sit. A comfortable, easy, graceful seat not working too hard, palms softening on the lap, crown lifted. Bring your hands to heart center in prayer. Taking that moment in Anjali Mudra, it Mudra's hand gestures for focus and meditation. Anjali is a moment of reverence. Take a soft, easy breath in. Let that breath go. Thumbs soften up towards the third eye center and bowing down. Namaste.